Good afternoon. Welcome back to NASDAQ Trade Talks. I'm your host, Jill Malandrino, Global Markets Reporter at NASDAQ. We have Consensus 2018 in New York City this week. It's the world's largest blockchain conference. Joining me at Market Site is Perry Ann Boring. She's the founder and president of the Chamber of Digital Commerce. Thank you very much. It's great to see you again Thanks for at Market Site. It's been quite the event at Consensus this year. It's only Wednesday. It's, and it's only Wednesday, <laughs> but fantastic energy, lots of people. It shows you the growth within the blockchain space. But give us a little overview of Consensus and what the CODC's role is. Well, this is a big, it's a big week. It's New York Blockchain Week. It, it really started over the weekend. On Sunday, I attended the Women on the Block event, which was a separate women's event that was held in Williamsburg. Um, and then the really the main event this week is consensus, but there's no less than you know 20 plus kind of side events going on oh, wow. throughout the week, including parties and networking sessions. So there's a lot of celebration. Most of our members are here making announcements, funding announcements, uh, new product launches. It's a great stage to, to announce new uh, updates uh, throughout the industry. So it, it's been a very exciting week. So the chamber is here. Most of our members. Um, are here, but the amount of energy that we're seeing is really showing just the maturation of the blockchain industry. Mm -hmm. Another key thing to note is the international presence. There's people from all mm -hmm. over the world. In fact, later this afternoon, we'll be hosting a meeting um, with the Global Blockchain Forum, which is a group of international policy folks. Mm -hmm. um, so we hold our annual meeting every year at Consensus. So the international coordination, the international dialogue is also starting to take off, which is another sign of the maturation of the blockchain right. industry. Uh, tell us about the Token Alliance Working Group. So we have a working group at the Chamber called the Token Alliance. We launched it last year in response to the activity that we've seen with ICOs and token sales. So in the past 12 to 24 months, there's been anywhere between five and seven billion dollars raised through the initial coin offering process. Some of that is very interesting and exciting, but to be totally frank and honest with you, um, there are bad actors who are abusing the industry, abusing this technology for nefarious purposes. So what we have done at the Chamber is help organize a group of over 350 people around the world. And in the absence of having clear regulatory frameworks and guidance today, we're drafting best practices for tokens. Um, so we are starting with um, drafting best practices for non-security tokens, putting together some rules of the road as a community and doing this in an industry-led approach. We'll be releasing this document within the next couple of weeks, uh, sometime in the second quarter of 2018. Um, but it, it is our way of regulating ourselves. It's right. our approach to self-regulation. We believe it's the responsible thing to do and also it's the right thing to do and it's a proactive way to address not the best activity right. and behavior in this nascent ecosystem. Well, it's always easier to be in front of it than having to play catch up, which we see in more mature asset classes. Yeah, and I also believe if the industry puts its proposal mm -hmm. out to the policy community and says this is how we believe is an appropriate way to oversee this technology, we will get much better results if we just leave it to the regulators and we leave right. it to government to do it. Nobody knows and understands this technology than the people who are working on it every single day. All right. They're and using our nonprofit platform to bring the right. various stakeholders together to have these important conversations is something that we believe is, is the responsible way to address issues around the token ecosystem. And to wrap up, how is the relationship with legislators? Is it improving as blockchain <laughs> continues to mature? <laughs> So four years ago, before we launched the Chamber of Digital Commerce, there was a senator, Joe Manchin, who called for a ban on Bitcoin, uh, which we thought was not the best idea, but we went from that, so that was kind of the sentiment in Congress, to today we have a blockchain caucus. So we had Congressman David Swiker with us this week. He is the co-chair of the blockchain caucus, so we went from having ma members asking to ban it to now having a caucus with over uh, 19 members of Congress who have come out to form a group to publicly support the blockchain industry within the Congress. So we have made a lot of progress, but we still have a lot of work to do. Right. Well, I can't, see, can't wait to see where it's going to be in the next four years. It's going to be it's fascinating. <laughs> All right. Well, thank you so much. It's great to see you again. Thank you for joining me throughout the day. I'm Jill Melandrino, Global Markets Reporter at NASDAQ.